What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And today we're talking college basketball bets. It is Thursday, January the 25th. We have a short slate in terms of power five teams, just two matchups, power six, I should say. We've got Arizona in a blowout, and then we have Arizona State on deck. But there's a ton of mid-majors. We'll be talking about mostly those matchups. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. We're also brought to you by BetMGM, and they have a limited time offer for those of you in legal states, with the exception of New York, Puerto Rico, and Nevada. What you'll do is click the link in the video description below, make your first deposit of at least $5, place a $5 wager on any team, any market, whatever you'd like. Whether it wins or loses, you will be paid out $158 in the form of bonus bets. You must be 21 or older to play in most jurisdictions. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All right, brief recap of the action yesterday before heading into today. Been basically trading money over the last five days. Last really good day was last Saturday, Friday, I believe, but then... Bad day on Monday, followed it up with basically getting all of it back on Tuesday. Same thing the last two days. And to get into the games yesterday, which ended up being a three and four finish, sorry. The first one to talk about is Seton Hall. So I've been saying this almost on every video. Follow Jordan Majeski on Twitter for injury information. I had a Seton Hall position, bought out of it when Kadari Richmond, the best play in the crux of the handicap, was ruled out. If you're not following him with Twitter notifications on, you are losing money. Whether it's buying out of bets where key players are ruled out, or, I mean, you can take positions on opposite teams when players do get ruled out, which is something I've been doing with a lot of success. Be careful with that. Maybe you get limited at some point. But, yeah, so did not actually end up with the wager on Seton Hall after that injury information came out. We won the Miami bet. They took down Notre Dame. Colorado took down Washington, fully healthy. Added Marshall. That was one of the bonus picks at the end. As far as losses go, Mississippi State lost to Florida, and a lot of these were foul issues. With Mississippi State, you had the three best players in foul trouble, including Tolu Smith, Jeffries, Matthews. They all were battling fouls, and Mississippi State still almost covered, which was surprising. Illinois played a weird game against Northwestern. That was an overtime game. Northwestern was an absolute bucket from three. They shot 11 of 18. But on the Illinois side, you had 10 turnovers. It wasn't the cleanest game from Terry Shannon. He had five of those turnovers. Northwestern only turned the ball over five times themselves. So you had a big gap in points off turnovers, which helped Northwestern on top of them shooting, just flame throwing from three. Illinois actually didn't play terribly. Their percentages were pretty good, rebounded well. It's just when you're going to have a team shoot 11 of 18 from three, you have a very low margin for error. And having five more turnovers, which Northwestern capitalized on, proved the difference. As far as the other losses, Utah against Washington State, not particularly close. Washington State Miles Rice was actually hurt too. So that's a pretty upsetting loss. And then Nova against St. John's. I think Nova just needs to be on the banned list at this point. That team, I mean, should probably fire their coach. Anyway, let's move forward to today's action. We have a bunch of mid-majors. First one we're going to talk about is Arkansas State taken on Louisiana. This is one where... We have a pretty tight spread. You're seeing this three and a half, four in most places in favor of Louisiana. I took a three early on. Three and a half, I still think is fine in this spot. This is a game between two teams we've already seen play once this year. Louisiana took that first game 84 to 80, and that was on the road. So now they're returning home here. They're the better team overall, but both of them are four and three in conference. So very much battling for you know the middle of this conference, James Madison near the top. I'm not sure either of these teams win it, but they're trying to at least. As far as the stylistics go in this matchup, Louisiana is the more balanced team just across the board. As you can see on the screen, they're 128th in offensive efficiency, 177th on defense. Arkansas State's more balanced toward the offensive end, 93rd there. They hemorrhage points on defense, 285th. But diving into some of the deeper metrics for these teams, this Raging Cajuns team can really shoot the ball which is, I think, their biggest advantage here. They're 88th in effective field goal percentage, 80th from three on the year. They also have the benefit of playing with the second most efficient player in the entire conference, Joe Charles. You can look up some of those stats on evanmia.com. They do a great job with the player ratings there. 
And really the only thing working in Arkansas State's favor is height. Louisiana is 279th in effective height, 271st in total rebounding. That's a weakness for them. Once we get to Arkansas State, I'll, I'll tell you why I don't think that is going to be as pronounced in this matchup. But basically to sum all up, all this up on the Louisiana side, you've got a great shooting team with a team on the opposite side hemorrhaging points on defense. As for Arkansas State, this team is a little tricky to evaluate right now. They've got a lot of injuries in their front court. Laquil Hardnett, Leilulaku both missed their last game. Isaiah Nelson suffered an in-game injury. I've not seen an update on his status. Those are three of the primary players that occupy the front court and would be the players that exploit the weakness on the other side, which is Louisiana's lack of height. So that worries me first and foremost from Arkansas State. And then the most efficient players on this team, Taryn Todd and DeAndre Dominguez, they're both top 12 in efficiency in this conference, but this team is working right into the strength of Louisiana's defense, who has elite guard play, elite guard defenders. They're 11th in the country at opposing three-point percentage. And with the injuries to the Arkansas State front court, I'm not sure they can really exploit Louisiana's weakness inside. So as the stronger team overall, already winning this matchup on the road, now returning home, I think anything under four is fine with Louisiana. Going to our second game, we have UC Irvine taking on Long Beach State. Another one with a similar spread here, but this time we have the road team slightly favored, which I happen to agree with. And this one's not going to be a super long road trip, especially in this conference. But with UC Irvine, you have a team that's playing really well this year and can also shoot the ball extremely well. With Long Beach State, I think a lot of people might hesitate to bet against them because of their wins against Michigan and USC, two elite wins for this team. But they've struggled since, and I think as far as how you evaluate wins and how they age, those are probably two of the weaker teams in the Power Five. And those the victories have aged poorly to this point. So strength of schedule wise, even with those wins, Long Beach State is 185th in most difficult strength of schedule, whereas you have UC Irvine at 105th. They've also played a very difficult schedule. It's a little more balanced than Long Beach State, which I think is important here and we'll talk about. As far as UC Irvine, this team has also played with some injuries throughout the year. Darren Saren, Devin Tillis, and Bent Luton all missed time earlier this year. And Luton, I think, is really important. He's a seven foot one center and the cog of this defense, which is the strength of the team. UC Irvine's 37th in total defensive efficiency, and he's one of the best defenders in the country. They're 172nd on offense. Fortunately, Long Beach State being 253rd on defense, I'm not really worried about some of their lack of offense at times. But on top of getting all those guys back from injury, the two most efficient players in this entire conference reside with UC Irvine. That's Pierre Cockrell and Justin Holm. They're both inside the top 10. And UC Irvine, as far as shooting-wise, this team is very good, despite ranking 172nd in the conference in overall offensive efficiency. They're a team that's kind of imbalanced. They actually shoot 50, the 50%, excuse me, their 50th in three-point percentage. And four of their five starters shoot at least 38% from beyond the arc. So this team can really shoot it. The defense on the other side is horrific. So see no issues with them really scoring. And I think some of the effective height numbers have been influenced by Lukton's injury. Again, the seven foot one center. He's back now. And this team actually is a little taller than we were initially looking at with these, these metrics here. As far as Long Beach State, they've actually been pretty disappointed with this team. They have a lot of transfers. And they haven't exactly gelled like Marcus De Sahonis is on this team. He formerly played for Washington. Outside of the Michigan and USC wins, which I never really like, just excluding wins, this team only has two wins in the top 100 or top 200. They came against Iona and Hawaii. They have plenty of losses outside the top 200. Portland, Illinois State, Cal State, Northridge. This team is 141st in offensive efficiency, 253rd on defense. That's where they really hemorrhage points. They don't have a size advantage in this game, especially with Lukedon back. Just a lot of concerns with this Long Beach State team. And they're not a team that is shooting the ball particularly well either. They're a team that hasn't had the transfers gel. Sahonis has been honestly bad compared to expectations for what we saw with this team. With UC Irvine coming in, slight favorites. I think this is one we can pretty confidently take. I have minus three. I think anything through minus four is completely fine. But again, shop these odds. One way to do so, just head to Odd Shopper. 
The link is below. And we've actually consolidated basically all our tools and offerings into one package. It's $14.95 for a week, $49.95 for a month. You get all the odd shopping features, our market-based approach with bets, as well as our Discord, where all these picks go ahead of time. So check that out, link below. Last game here, let's pivot over. We've got Florida International taken on Western Kentucky. This is a six and a half point spread. And this is one I think we have pretty good details on. We have Western Kentucky is a big favorite. They're a team that's been built largely through the portal, but they're a team that I think has a little bit of meat left on the bone because of some of this. I mean, you look at this Western Kentucky starting five, it's basically all power five guys. We've got Don McHenry, Tyrone Marshall, Christian Lander, Dante Allen, Rodney Howard from Georgia Tech. Like there's players here really across the board that are just power five elite transfers. So I'm not really that surprised that Western Kentucky comes in the favor here and I make it a little wider. So first and foremost, this Western Kentucky team is a lead on defense. At times they struggle to score 59th in total defensive efficiency. I'm not really sure that FIU does anything well. So just being strong in one category, I think makes a big difference here. But honestly, I'm kind of buying the shooting of this team. They've gotten better of late. And you have Don McHenry, Tyron Marshall, Christian Lander, Dante Allen, all shooting at least 35% from three. And you have a team on the other side that ranks outside the top 330 in both opposing two-point and three-point percentage. I will note that Christian Lander is battling a concussion, but that did occur over a week ago, which should give him a pretty decent chance to suit up. But it's at least worth noting. On the FIU side, I also think this team's going to be shorthanded. They lost their second most efficient player, Jonathan Abar, and there hasn't been an update on his status. Without him, that basically just leaves Arturo Dean as any sort of legitimate threat. And Abar's 6'9", so his absence leaves this Panthers team shorthanded in the front court, which I think was their best path to victory against this Western Kentucky team. I mean, Western Kentucky's good on defense everywhere. They're a little weaker on the inside where they rank 132nd from the perimeter, they rank 30th. So now losing a bar, you lose your biggest way to exploit this potential advantage. So I'm on Western Kentucky here. I think the six and a half is completely fine. And that'll round it out for today. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think of these picks. If you have any feedback, would love to hear that as well. Continually taking it. Still waiting on the graphics team. They're a little backed up. So hopefully soon. If you have a question, reach out to me on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, good luck.